making a small connecting rod in the workshop, part one. This video shows the marking out and starting to make a connecting rod for a small model station with steam engine. This is a simple job, but there are some rules that need to be followed. I drilled two holes in the piece of bar, and then I painted one side of it with marking out blue. And now I'm sort of, well, sketching on this to get a rough idea of the shape of the connecting rod. The good thing about using some marking out fluid, or alternatively if you're using some spray paint, if you make a mistake, you can paint out the error. Because you're not really scratching the metal very much, you're just removing the layer of the blue stuff, and using the very visible silver lines of the bare metal to show you where to cut. So here I am at the milling machine, I have the piece of metal firmly clamped in the machine vise, and I'm about to do it wrong. This is not a good way to do it. My milling machine is not a particularly good quality one. The milling cutter is held in a drill chuck, and by the way, this drill chuck never drops milling cutters, that's why I use it. But it's fitted to a Morse taper number two that in turn is fitted into an R8 taper. So whenever I'm milling, I cannot go directly in full depth with the milling cutter. And even on a proper milling machine, like a bridge port or similar, the weak link is still the milling cutter because it's not very big. So what's the solution? Well, you just set the milling cutter to take shallower cuts and many of them. It's a bit of a handle winding marathon because you have to go back and forth many more times. But eventually you will be cutting full depth. Just be careful when you get to the end of the cut as the milling cutter is going to be very prone to chattering. Some sort of cutting lubricant or at least oil is a good idea. But for the purposes of the video, I didn't use any lubricant just so the images are sharper. Originally, this was going to be the connecting rod for the tangy engine that I'm working on, but then I changed my mind and I thought I would be able to make two or three videos showing how to mill a coupling rod or a connecting rod in detail. In this clip, for instance, I'm machining a part of the connecting rod that I wouldn't normally need to machine. But there's a good reason for this and I will show it in the next video. For now though, I'm just trying to show in detail how to use a milling cutter without A, breaking it, or B, making a thorough mess of the work, or a combination of the two. If I was just milling the edge of a rod, then I could use the cutter full length. But the minute that I come into the work, it starts to scream. But as you can see and hear, provided I don't push the milling cutter into the work, I can use the side of the end mill, full depth, and it doesn't make much noise, it just removes the metal. It's cutting beautifully at the moment, and it's not making much noise at all. And in the case of this particular operation, I have to be very careful because the milling cutter is not cutting against the work when it gets to the end of its travel at the right hand side. And that's why I haven't cut up to the line. What I'll end up doing is once I've machined some of this material away, when I machine the curved part at the right hand side, I'll revert back to using very shallow cuts and many of them, or this will happen. Now I need to take a cut towards me. And once again, I've lifted the milling cutter and I'm taking a succession of very fine cuts. Well, not that fine, but not heavy duty ones. As I lower the position of the milling cutter, it's much more likely to chatter when it gets to the end of the travel. In common with many metalworking operations, you do need a delicate touch. A noise like this can cause major problems, not to mention you will not get a very good finish. This is going to be easy to see because I've moved the milling cutter over to this side. I'm not really following the vernier numbers on the hand wheels. I should do really, but I'm more interested in not cutting past the line. Now it's time to reduce the thickness of it. And don't forget it needs to taper. This component is going to remain looking very crude until I finally finish it. I'm able to take much deeper cuts with the end of the end mill, but I'm making sure that I position the cutter exactly on the centre line of the work. At this point in the operation, I remove the part from the milling vise to clean off the burrs created by the end mill. With my Proxon motor tool fitted into the holder, I can use this to further clean up the milled parts. The finish isn't bad from the milling cutter, but it's going to look a whole lot better after the Proxon motor tool has done its work. Back now to the milling machine, I've mounted the blank back in the machine vise and I'm machining off the excess metal from the other side, and now it looks like this. As I mentioned earlier, in the next video I'm going to show how to profile a coupling rod end or a connecting rod. I've started to round the end of the connecting rod using my one inch belt sander. 
and although I'm not going to use this connecting rod on the Tangi engine, in this clip with the help of a scriber I'm showing that I need to remove quite a lot of metal yet to make it fit in place. And I will also show how to do that in the next video. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.